Good morning. I would like to call this meeting of the House Children and Youth Committee to order. Just a reminder that the meeting is being broadcasted and recorded. Please cell phones are silenced. I ask that members use a microphone when speaking and make sure that the green light is well. Today we will be voting on two bills, House Bill 2041 sponsored by Representative Curry and House Bill 1600 sponsored by Representative to get started, I'd like to ask Stacy to take Chair McNeil. Representatives Bellman. Here. Boyd. Serrato. Designation. Curry. Des Fleming. Designation. Gensd. Here. Hanbidge. Here. Howard. Here. Kazim. Designation. Kraduski. Here. McAndrew. Designation. Nelson. Designation. Powell. Designation. Chair Joswiak. Here. Representative Fink. Designation. Flick. Here. Brim Krupa. Designation. Hogan. McKenzie. Designation. Olsummer. Rossi. Designation. Schlegel. Designation. Watro. And Zimmerman. Designation. Okay, we have a quorum. Thank you. Our first bill for consideration is House Bill 1600, sponsored by Representative Schuster. There is a motion to consider House Bill 1600. Thank you, Rep. Hambridge. Is there a second? Thank you, Rep. Gens. Danielle, please provide a summary. Good morning. House Bill 1600, sponsored by Representative Schusterman, expands oversight and accountability of juvenile justice facilities by requiring regular county level review of interventions with juvenile delinquents by DHS, including youth facilities, limits solitary confinement for youth, and permits detained youth to be housed only in Pennsylvania or neighboring states. Thank you, Danielle. I am offering a EO6. Danielle, please explain. Amendment A06022, sponsored by Chair McNeil, adds language related to the following. Use of congregate care, living, and institutional placement as short term, the appointment and training of counsel for indigent youth in the context of criminal proceedings, placement instability statistics, and the use of manual restraints on a youth by staff. The amendment also adds clarifying language assisting the Department of Human Services with developing a publicly available data dashboard that includes real-time information, including updates on population and placement, including basic demographics, facility bed capacity, facility staff ratios, facility programming offered, and average length of stay in each facility. Uh, the following third-party interest groups support this legislation. Children First, Pennsylvania Youth Sentencing and Reentry Project, and the Juvenile Law Center. Thank you, Danielle. I'd like to make note that Representative Curry is here, and also Rep. Hambridge has requested to make a comment. Oh, not yet? Okay. My apologies. Chair Josiak. Thank you, Chairwoman. I'd like to make a comment on the amendment A06022. You know, while this amendment attempts to address some concerns that I have heard from stakeholders about the underlying bill, it also has raised additional concerns. The requirement to develop a real-time publicly available database will create additional and unnecessary burdens to providers without delivering comparative value. Section 722 of the Human Services Code already requires DHS to gather, interpret, and disseminate statistics and reports of the problem of juvenile delinquency and to the treatment of juveniles. Additional real-time data collection requirements to organizing already facing financial and staffing challenges 
does not seem to me to be the best way to advance the goal of this legislation. Further, the Juvenile Court Judges Commission already publishes a fair amount of data, including interactive dashboards on their website. There are many unanswered questions about this database. Who would be responsible for updating the real-time dashboard each time a juvenile enters or leaves a facility? How is the updating to occur? And how will staff ratios be tracked, just to name a few? These concerns have also been raised by the Juvenile, Ju Juvenile Court Judges Commission, as well as the Pennsylvania Council of Children, Youth, and Family Services. Another concern of this amendment is that it still restricts the out-of-state placement of, del of a delinquent child. Although it lists the geographic limitations in the underlying bill, out-of-state placement would still only be permitted if it is medically necessary. This term is unclear and needs clarification. Further, by limiting the qualification for out-of-state placement to medical, ne to medical necessity, it limits the care and services a juvenile may need. Importantly, many juveniles in placement need mental and behavioral health-related services. In some rare instances, those services are not available in Pennsylvania, but they are available out of state. The juveniles who need these th those types of services should get them. Their care should not be limited to their physical health needs only. As with the underlying bill, we have not heard from DHS about this amendment. Because of that and because of the mentioned concerns, I will be no voting. And I ask my colleagues to, for a no vote. Thank you, Chairwoman. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to add that Re Representative Boyd, Fleming, and Powell have arrived at the meeting. Okay. And Rep. Nelson. Is there a motion to adopt the amendment? Rep. Representative Boyd, thank you. Is there a second? Representative Fleming. Are there any negative votes on the amendment? Uh, will you take a roll call, Stacey? Chair McNeil? Yes. Representatives Bellman? Yes. Boyd? Serrato? Curry? Designation. Yes. Fleming? Yes. Gensd? Hambidge? Yes. Howard? Yes. Kazim? Representative uh, designation, yes. Krajewski? Yes. McAndrew? Designation, yes. Nelson? And Powell? Yes. Chair Joswiak? No. Representative Spink? Designation, no. Flick? Grim Krupa? Designation, no. Hogan? McKenzie? Designation no. All summer? Rossi? Designation no. Schlegel? Designation no. Watro? And Zimmerman? Designation no. The amendment passes. There were a motion to adopt the bill as amended. Representative Hambidge, and a second? Second, Representative Curry. And uh, Chair Josviak, you have comments on the legislation? Yes, I do. Thank you, Chairwoman uh, McNeil. I support the concept of this bill as I believe it addresses some very important issues like the availability of services, the preservation of a family unit whenever possible, and the overall safety of children in residential facilities in the Commonwealth. I would agree that we must have greater protections in place for juveniles in such facilities. These vulnerable children should be treated fairly and with dignity. However, I do have some concerns with the bill as drafted. The definitions are not entirely clear. For example, the term measure of last resort is used with regard to restrictive procedures but there is no further definition or explanation of what a measure of the last resort actually means. The facilities and staff tasked with ensuring the welfare and safety of the delinquent juveniles in their care should be given as much guidance as possible. 
Also, there is conflicting language regarding the use of restrictive procedures. In one part of the bill, restrictive procedures are to be used as measures of last resort, but another section requires a prohi prohibi prohibition on the use of restrictive procedures. As we have heard from the Juvenile Court Judges Commission, the clearer the language, the better. We all want to keep juveniles safe and secure. The folks who have to implement the law, whether judges, juvenile probation officers, or staff in juvenile facilities, should have clear, defined language in order to do their jobs to the best of their abilities. Another concern is that the bill does not address gender identity with strip searches. Some of the children within these facilities may be transgender or have gender identities not shared by the staff conducting the search. If we are going to cover the topic of restrictive procedures, including the parameters of strip searches, guidance on this issue should be provided to those implementing the procedure. All of the concerns I have listed are shared by the Juvenile Court Judges Commission and the Chief Probation Officers. I believe they are valid and should be addressed before legislation of this significance is passed. Lastly, we have not heard from DHS on this bill and I am not comfortable with moving forward without this type of comprehensive legislation without their input. Due to the concerns I have shared and without hearing from DHS, I will be a no vote and ask my colleagues to join me in voting no. However, as this bill advances, I am open to collaboration on amendments to strengthen the language and help provide stronger protections for those juveniles. Thank you, Chairwoman. Thank you, Chairman. Rep. Hambridge, do you have some comments? I think one of the state's greatest duty is, is how we treat kids of all ages and all walks of life. The fact that we're trying to make positive steps to improve the lives of children who are currently in our care um, is really admirable and I, I appreciate the work done by the, the maker of the bill um, on trying to pro make, pr move the needle forward on improving the lives of kids. So I'll be a supportive vote. Thank you, Rep. Hambridge. I appreciate the intentions of this legislation as it is important that we ensure the well-being and safety of children who come into contact with the juvenile system. Oh. I encourage my colleagues to vote yes on this bill. Is there any further discussion on House Bill 1600? I'd like to uh, take this vote up and uh, I'm sorry, this is my first one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm going to take ask Stacy to take the roll. Chair McNeil. Yes. Representatives Bellman. Yes. Boyd. Yes. Serrato. Curry. Nation. Curry. Yes. Fleming. Yes. Gensd. Yes. Hambidge. Yes. Howard? Yes. Kazim? Designation, yes. Krajewski? Yes. McAndrew? Designation, yes. Nelson? And Powell? Yes. Chair Joswiak? No. Representatives Fink? Designation, no. Flick? Grim Krupa? Designation, no. Hogan, McKenzie, designation no, All Summer, Rossi, designation no, Schlegel, designation no, Watro, and Zimmerman, designation no. Thank you. The bill passes 17-8. The second bill for consideration is House Bill 2461, sponsored by Rep. Curry. There's a motion to consider House Bill 2461. Rep. Curry. And a second? Rep. Rep. Nelson. Thank you. Danielle, please provide a summary of the bill. House Bill 2461, sponsored by Representative Curry, establishes the Ebony Alert System in Pennsylvania. The Ebony Alert System is similar to the Amber Alert System, which would be enforced by the Pennsylvania State Police. 
The Ebony Alert system requires law enforcement to immediately activate an alert if one or more requirements such as age or possible mental or physical disability are met. The Ebony Alert system is specifically tailored to finding missing black and brown youth, including both young women and girls. The following third-party interest group supports this legislation, CASA Youth Advocates. The following third-party interest group is neutral on this legislation, the Pennsylvania Council of Children, Youth, and Family Services, and the following third-party interest group is opposed to this legislation, the Pennsylvania State Police. Thank you, Danielle. Rep. Curry, the prime sponsor of House Bill 2461, is present to provide brief remarks on the bill. Good morning, and <clears throat> thank you for allowing me, Chair, to speak on this. Thank you, Chair McNeil and Chair Joswiak, um, for the chance to explain why I have decided to make this bill. Today, I want to bring everyone's attention to a pressing issue that affects countless families across the Commonwealth and our nation. There is an alarming disparity in media attention and resources dedicated to black, missing black and brown youth. 38% of all missing persons cases are frequently overlooked and often receiving little to no coverage when they vanish. This inequity not only affects public awareness, but also impacts the urgency with which investigations are conducted. Many missing black and brown individuals are categorized as runaways versus a category of missing for their white counterparts, which limits the resources and support allocated to find them. This systemic bias leads to a situation where their disappearances are not treated with the same urgency as those of their white counterparts. As a result, black women and girls are at an increased risk of being harmed and even trafficked, and families are left in anguish, feeling forgotten and unsupported. A recent report on human trafficking incidents across the country found that 40% of sex trafficking victims were identified as black women, which are youth into black womanhood. This, this legislation is designed to prioritize and publicize cases of missing black and brown individuals aged 12 to 25. Alabama, California, Missouri, and New York have also introduced legislation to address this issue, recognizing the urgent need to improve the visibility of black and brown missing youth from marginalized communities. Does the Amber Alert work? Well, we know that it has been impactful in helping to find young children. Bias and fear may also play a role. Education is critically important around finding missing children. I urge us to take inspiration from these other states and work towards the implementation of an Ebony Alert system here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. This initiative could not only enhance public awareness, but also ensure that our missing youth receive the attention and resources they so desperately need. We must advocate and take a bold and necessary action for a system that recognizes every life as valuable, regardless of race or background. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Curry. Representative Kazim is now here, would like to say some words on the legislation. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much, Chairwoman McNeil, and also Chairman Jajwiak so much for allowing Representative Curry and myself to come today to speak about House Bill 2461. Uh, my representative sister here had already spoke a little bit more about 
um, why this legislation is important. And this legislation was also brought up in the state of California. And um, for those that are probably wondering, why are we trying to make a difference between an Amber Alert and an Ebony Alert? Um, for those that are not really aware, this topic has been going on for a very long time. Um, whether we want to recognize it, whether we want to feel as though it's something we should acknowledge, um, it's been put out, I don't know if anybody are Lifetime Movie Network lovers like myself, uh, but it has been put out on Lifetime, Netflix, um, Law and Order, but the reason why these things are being brought up even in the media is because they recognize that there's an issue when it comes to the alert system. And this is just really similar to the Amber Alert. And when it comes to the media, when it comes to um, just local resources, trying to find young black and brown um, you know, girls and boys, unfortunately, it's not really put out the way it should be. And that's something that I know because I've experienced it myself. Um, and I know that you know, when it comes to local support, it's just not really, unfortunately, just not emphasized. So I'm just really asking all of my colleagues to really look into this matter and not look at it versus what it looks like as far as color, race, or any of that, but it is an issue that we have here across this commonwealth and also across this country. So I'm just asking that our children is also prioritized as well when it comes to you know our alert systems. And in California, when this alert goes out, it does help find young uh, black and girls and black boys as well, just the same way we would for our counterpart. So thank you very much. Thank you, Rep. Kazim, and also Chairwoman I, and Chairman. I just wanted to make notice that New York has um, a way that they do it as well. They put out um, public announcements when black and brown children go missing. Um, and it's something that we really need to consider here in Pennsylvania. There's some case study. I would encourage everyone to go and look at, um, but it is something that we wanted to bring up today, and we thank you for your attention. Thank you, Reps Curry and Kazim. I want to thank the I want to thank the makers of this bill, Representative Curry and Representative Kazim, for your work in addressing the need for an Ebony Alert system. I believe this legislation is essential in providing the necessary resources to locate children of color. I encourage my colleagues to vote yes on this bill. Is there any further discussion on this bill? Chairman Josiak. Thank you, Chairwoman. You know, folks, our state is lucky to have a very effective Amber Alert System and a missing endangered person advisory system known as MEPA. While I appreciate the intent of this legislation, expansion of alerts can have an unwanted consequences of desensitizing the public. Over the years, there has been other legislation introduced to create additional alert systems, but the Pennsylvania State Police has historically expressed their concern with diluting the alert system to the point that people ignore them, or worse, turn them off altogether. Our state has been a model for the alert system in the United States in that we have not oversaturated the public with alerts, which makes the Amber Alert and the MEPA systems all the more effective. A child reporting missing, whether they have been abducted by a loved one or, God forbid, a victim of trafficking, the current alert systems can be utilized by law enforcement to coordinate the search and hopefully safe return of that child. Now, Representative Kazim, you, in your testimony this morning, you said this system is similar to the Amber Alert system. So I believe our existing Amber Alert system and MEPA systems already cover the criteria for individuals identified in the spills. For that reason and the greater concern of desensitizing the public to alerts entirely, I will be a no vote. Thank you, Chairwoman. Thank you, Chairman. Is there a motion to adopt the bill? <laughs> Representative Flick. Thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you to the makers of the bill. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I know we all take, hopefully, quite a bit of time in looking at each and every bill. This one, I took a significant amount of time and and very often work with Rep Fleming and others in this room on children of color. Uh, I myself have children of color, so I'm a very diverse family, as is Representative Zimmerman when we met. Um, so sitting around the table Saturday night with four of my kids, uh, two of color and two not, you know, often I ask them questions, 19, 20, 22 years old, have you ever heard of this? I'm, I'm shocked by sometimes what they don't know. But I ask them, have you ever heard of the Amber Alert system? Oh, of course, Dad, yes, yes, of course. So I certainly applaud your efforts, but I, I agree with Chair Josniak that 
um, that that Amber Alert system is so well known. And I also agree that there's the, the disparities a- absolutely um, with children of color. But I'm just wondering if we can pour more resource, resources into the Amber Alert system instead of having two systems. So again, thank you so much for, for your hard work on this. Chair Thank you so much, uh, Chairwoman, and thank you, Chairman, and also Rep, for your uh, feedback on that, which is well noted and taken. Um, I just want to emphasize that it's not more so the fact that Amber Alert is not known. It's the media attention. It's the resources. It's our local resources, our local law enforcement, who may not really push for helping young brown boys and girls looking for them. A lot of times they're just put out as only runaways. um, And unfortunately it increases their chance of being trafficked. And that's who they actually target. Now, Chairman, respectfully, I'm just gonna give you a slight story of, of myself. When I was 12 years old, there was an individual who would come into my local city, which is predominantly black and Latino. And he came consistently trying to lure me into his car. And he would always put out $20 and say, oh, just show me where's this, where's this, where's that. And I will always say no, but I'll point to him where he is looking for his location. And I went to my local police department to go and report it. It's not that they didn't care. It's not that they didn't hear me. But a lot of times, some things are not really prioritized, especially because who I am. Now, I battled with whether we should push this forward or not because we didn't want to make it seem like, oh, we're only trying to push for young black girls or black boys. But the truth is, this is who we are, and this is the things that we go through, and I lived it myself. And what happened with that, he continuously kept coming and trying trying to lure other young black girls. And then what happened was, one day I stood at the school, and I told the principal. The principal, who was then a Caucasian man, came with me, followed me. He stood and parked in a corner somewhere. And when he saw this gentleman, he tried to chase him, but this guy took off. We then went to the police department, and then from there they decided they were going to put out papers all around the polls. And then then had a school assembly and said, if you see this gentleman, ignore him. But unfortunately, two to three people were taken in the midst of it, which it could have been prevented if they took it seriously. Now, my issue with this is that it's already been put out. It's been all over worldwide. We all know what Amber Alert is. I know what it is. When it comes, it comes to everyone's phone. We all get it. But the problem is is that we still have a disparity when it comes to reporting, when it comes to our data, when it comes to pushing the urgency to find these children. And you see them everywhere. You go into Wawa, you see so many of them all across the walls. It's not to say that Amber Alert picks and chooses who they want. But I also know when it comes to the priority, the urgency, we are not looked at the same way that our counterparts are. So I'm just asking that you do take some time to look into it, that we're only asking the Pennsylvania State Police that when these children are missing, that they also put the urgency and that they take in and put it for both sides. That's all, Chairman. Thank you so much again for your feedback. Chairman Josiak. Um. Representative Kazim, thank you for your uh, experience. I've been in law enforcement 38 years, 26 as a state trooper and 12 as sheriff of Brooks County. Every time an Amber Alert has come out, my experience is law enforcement, all types, the local police, they look for that person. Even today, when I'm driving down the highway and I see the alert systems on the interstates where they light up the car, license plate, and what they're looking for, I'm looking. And, and I'm not even a law enforcement guy anymore. And many retired policemen, they're looking. There's more people looking than you realize. Nobody wants these kids abducted. Everybody wants them home safely. And the first 24 hours is critical. First couple hours is critical. So I would have to say uh, my experience is that when, when this happens, law enforcement, state police and local police, they go right after those. They're looking for those people. And they're... They're talking to neighbors, they're talking to families, wherever, does, wherever they go, who do they know? There's all sorts of questions, but they, in many cases they find them, some, some cases they don't. Um, but I still think that the Amber Alert system is the premier system in the United States. It works for everybody. Um, we, don't, we don't decide are they black, white, or brown. We don't care, we, we, it's a person. That's what we're looking for. So thank you, uh, I thank you for your comments. I do appreciate them, but I, you need to hear from my side too. Thank you, Chairman. Representative Curry. Thank you, um, Chairman. 
I do appreciate your work in the law enforcement. Like that's critical to this conversation. Yeah. I think one of the things that we know, just like you said, you watch, we're on a turnpike all the time. When I see it, I'm looking as well, and I'm praying because we know it's a situation where if a child is missing, that somewhere's, someone's anguish is very high. Um, the issue that we know in looking at, Reb Kazim gave some examples of, uh, you know, different media outlets that, you know, Hulu and Netflix and everything, they make these stories because these stories come up and the, the statistics point to a particular demographic that isn't being looked at the same. And so when you look at the statistics with human trafficking, we know that black and brown children are taken into that trafficking system at a high rate. What I want to say is, I know you're talking about the Amber Alert, but we also made a silver alert for seniors, which I look at that all the time, too. We know that seniors, the reason why that was put out, because seniors who experience dementia and things like that may go missing. Well, for our children, black and brown children, I say our children, because we have children who look like this. And I have a young woman who's 24 who I'm always saying, be careful. You know, I'm telling my 15-year-old, do not walk by white vans. Like, we have this thing in my house because it's something that we talk about. It's almost like these conversations that you have because you're with a certain demographic in your family, but everybody else doesn't know. This is why we're making this bill, so that everyone else does know. We don't have these conversations if it doesn't necessarily impact us. It does impact us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. One more. Uh, Chairman Josie. Just one more comment. Thank you for your comments. Uh, I appreciate that. But I got to tell you, I walked in the shoes of police officers. I know what they do. The Pennsylvania State Police do an outstanding job when it comes to these missing people. Amber Alerts, that is the model in the United States. Everybody knows what that is. I really don't want to dilute it because that is the cri that's critical. We put too many of these alerts out. After a while, they say, well, they're looking for a white kid or a black kid. Or what? We're looking for people. We don't care what color they are. The Amber Alert works the best. And that's what's, I, I'm in favor of keeping the Amber Alert the main, the main system. And that's why I will vote no on this bill for that reason. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Nelson. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I, I appreciate the conversation we're having. We, we got to use different terminology, though, because we can't say things like diluting with too many alerts. When what we're trying to do is make sure that we're finding children. Um, if, if there is a sense that there are too many alerts and we're not going to alert folks of missing children or potentially abducted children, if anybody is making the determination that well, we can't put out another alert because people will start to turn this off. That, that's when the system breaks down. That's when trust breaks down. So this is an important step. Uh, it, is, it is both a realization and an acknowledgement that we have a, a massive, massive problem nationwide, globally, to be honest with you, uh, around child abductions and especially abductions into sex trafficking. Uh, for, for communities of color and for, for often overlooked and under-considered individuals. But, but we also need to make sure that as we continue to have this debate, and, and, I, and I feel confident that the votes are there for this, so we will move this bill forward, I believe. But as we continue to have this conversation, talking about diluting a system with too many alerts is the wrong language because those alerts are individuals. And the idea that too many individuals going missing precludes our ability to find the ones that we're really looking for is exactly why we're having this, this bill. It is exactly why we want to make sure that we are advancing um, an alert system that says uh, every child is important. And if the Amber Alert isn't working for our kids, then our kids are going to have another alert. We have to make sure that not only we move this bill, please vote yes for this because it is real. 
and if this current system isn't finding all our kids, then we need more. But we also need to make sure when we do so, that our language is appropriate and respectful of, of individuals missing, not the preservation of a system that isn't working for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Rep. Hambidge. Rep. Krajewski. Thank you, Chair. Um, and I'll start by thanking the makers of the bill and thank you for your leadership in protecting our, our vulnerable children across the Commonwealth. Um, I'll, I'll make my remarks quick. Uh, you know, I, I believe as state legislators, it is our responsibility to put in place statewide standards and to ensure that anyone in our Commonwealth is treated the same and given the same amount of care regardless of what county they're in. And while I respect the perspective of my colleagues and, and your experience with the Amber Alert, I suspect that experience is very different than what might be for a child, a child of color in Delaware County. And I think it's important for us, I think that's what's beautiful about our Commonwealth is there's a variety of experiences, a variety of perspectives, but we also must hold that for some of us and for children of color who are, who are lost, who are at threat, they're often not given the same level of care and treatment and attention that others in this state are. And so I think what the makers of this bill are trying to do is, is really correct that discrepancy around while your experience in your county may be true, that's not true for some of our children in other counties. And so as state legislators, it is our responsibility to ensure that that statewide standard is equal for everybody. So I don't think the points that are being made in this conversation are actually in opposition to each other. I think what we're just trying to say is we need to have more space for the conversation for those of us who may not have that experience with children under the Amber Alert. So I, I thank the makers of this bill for bringing this attention uh, to our committee, and I look forward to voting yes. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion to, to adopt the bill? Rep. Hambidge. Second. Rep. Fleming. With no further discussion, I'm going to ask Stacey to take the roll call. Chair McNeil? Yes. Representatives Bellman? Yes. Boyd? Serrato? Designation, yes. Curry? Yes. Fleming? Gensd? Yes. Hambidge? Yes. Howard? Kazim? Yes. Krajewski? Yes. McAndrew? Designation, yes. Nelson? Powell? Chair Joswiak? No. Representatives Fink? Designation, no. Flick? Grim Krupa? Designation, no. Hogan? Mackenzie? Designation, no. All summer? Rossi? Designation, no. Schlegel? Designation, no. Watro? Zimmerman? Designation, no. The bill passes 15 to 10. Finally, House Resolution 563 is being considered, sponsored by Representative Curry. Is there a motion to consider House Resolution 563? 
have a, a, someone a, first for the bill, for the resolution, I'm sorry. The resolution, 563. Um, here's the explanation why there was talk going on. I'll um, provide it. This was just introduced this morning. Has not been had time to. It was just received. It was introduced late last week. I did not write this. I did not introduce it. Sarah Speed did on behalf of Representative Curry. It is House Resolution 563. This committee has taken action on this previously. It's sponsored by Representative Curry. It designates the week of November 11th, 2024 through November 15th, 2024 as Pennsylvania Education for Students Experiencing Homelessness Awareness Week and November 15th, 2024 as Red Shirt Day in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Thank you, Danielle. Do I have a motion to adopt the resolution? Rep. Powell and a second, Rep. N Nelson. And then Chair Josiak would like to make a comment. Thank you, Chairwoman. Um, this resolution uh, is not on the schedule. Um, it's probably a, a ruling issue, but uh, as chairman of the Republican side, I feel that we should run this. Uh, we should run this resolution, and I would urge our members to uh, consider this and vote your district. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I want to thank the maker of the resolution, Rep. Curry. It's important to raise awareness for students experience homelessness and barriers to their education. I encourage my colleagues to vote yes on this resolution. Stacy, will you take the vote? Oh, excuse me, Representative Curry wanted to make some comments. I'm sorry, Rep. Thank you, um, Chairwoman and Chairman Josiak. I appreciate you taking this into consideration. This is something that the former Representative um, Donna Bullock and Chairwoman of this committee worked on very hard throughout her tenure. And um, we want to keep it going. So thank you so much. It is in November that this week is acknowledged. So we want to make sure that our members here of this committee understand what it is and that you can remember Red Shirt Day to wear your red shirts on the 15th, even though we won't be here in session, but back in your districts to acknowledge it. It's very important. We know that a lot of our children and students who go on to college experience homelessness and being unhoused. And it's something that we really want to bring attention to so that we can continue helping children and youth be strong in those times that aren't so strong. And so we thank you today for bringing this forward on short notice. Thank you. And I urge a yes vote. Thanks. I did want to note that this does constitute as in any other business on our meeting agenda. Um, I do apologize that you did not receive a copy of the full resolution in your packet. As I mentioned, I just received it. Um, was literally just delivered before this meeting, but it does constitute as any, and any other business um, as outlined on our meeting agenda. Thank you, Danielle. Stacy, will you take the roll? Chair McNeil? Yes. Representatives Bellman? Yes. Boyd? Serrato? Designation, yes. Curry? Yes. Fleming? Against, Hambidge. Resignation, yes. Howard? Yes. Kazim? Krajewski? McAndrew? Designation, yes. Nelson? And Powell? Chair Joswiak? Yes. Representative Sphink? Designation, yes. Flick, Grim Krupa, designation yes, Hogan, McKenzie, designation yes, All Summer, Rossi, designation yes, Schlegel, designation yes, Watro, Zimmerman, designation yes. The resolution passes 25-0. With no further business, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Rep. Kazine, second. Second. Thank you. This meeting's adjourned.